it's uh, it's been very different for everyone involved and um, a lot of players not just players everyone's finding it uh, it's kind of like an unprecedented uh, sort of situation mm. so for me also it has been difficult uh, at times it, there has been uh, some positive things about it and there's also been some things that um, you know you struggle with finding the right kind of training ghar pe hi baithe ho to wo thoda kabhi kabhi you get a little frustrated but it's all about managing and making the best of this time i mean though like bombay ka situation is totally different from other cities in the world i mean in india at least exactly uh, but in uh, india also but yeah, yeah. Other cities like Bangalore is totally locked down now. One of my friends is over there, and she's like, "Yeah, everything is locked." Again, they have uh, brought that March ka mahina again in this month because it's, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's totally tough for everyone nowadays. It's like whenever I think about any badminton player or any athlete, my first question is to ask that: What is the first best memory being a sports person? Being for you, it's a badminton. So, what is your first best badminton memory? Uh, so, for me, my first best memory came very early on in my career. I think I was around nine years old, and oh. that's when I won my first under ten state championship. Okay. And I played my first national final, which was all in under ten. So, at nine years old, I had that feeling. Okay, I'm a state champion. Like, imagine a nine year old thinking that they're a state champion and that actually kind of happened so that would be my best memory starting on that kind right. of gave me the confidence to you know really pursue it further right right uh so 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 the spark came like the spark for badminton came at what age what, what was your age when you started playing badminton uh, i think around 7 or 8 is when i started playing and i just saw my dad play and i wanted to learn the sport and mm-hmm. so he decided it would be best to kind of enroll me into an academy mm-hmm. and uh, immediately i i think i just took to it i would just sit and watch you know better players playing for hours i would just be like man i wish i could do that that looks so cool you know uh, moving around the court mm-hmm. and uh, i was very fascinated by the game and then finally one day like i started working on uh, getting those skills right right uh 8 years i mean very yeah चैंपियनशिप Yes so uh, that was the team event that I won with Air India I was playing I was playing for Air India at the time and they have a junior team as well and we won the I think it was in Jaipur that we won mm-hmm. um so that has been interesting but I actually won my first real national title in the sub junior category which was back in 2011 okay so that was my the first sub junior nationals that I won and I was 14 at the time mm-hmm. so how is the feeling standing on that podium getting that medal and all It was just phenomenal. I think being called a national champion, or you know, be it in any uh, any age group or anything, it's, it's a very special feeling because it kind of um, makes all the hard work worth it. Because you feel like, okay, I worked hard and I kind of got a very good result. And right now, you know, one year you will be the reigning national champion, and then uh, you have to play again. So it's, it's a very special thing for sure. Right. So. Badminton your first memory I have taken. Now let me just start with your childhood. Like, were you like a curious kind of girl, or you were like okay, chalta hai kind of thing, or you were a silent creature or mischievous? How was your childhood? Um, I think I was I was a very enterprising kid. I was always taking up new projects, and whether it was dance or reading or painting, and from a very early age, I took part in literally everything. from uh, all school activities my name would literally be there on top like okay it's not they wouldn't even ask me if you want to take part they just be like okay it's the annual play sanjana is going to be there it's the it's the student council election sanjana is going to be there so i literally took part in everything right and um, so i was i was very very enterprising i was always looking to learn and i had that very curious kind of nature 
Mm-hmm. Um, at the same time, I enjoyed uh, having my own space as well. So it was kind of like a mix of both. Right, right. So, so were you like, uh, like, बहुत ही शांत एंड पढ़ा को kind of like, like, लेकिन mischief करते थे कि mischief से दूर ही रहना है like. हाँ, mix of both. So, जैसे for example, ऐसा नहीं था. I used to have fun also, but uh, it was like if I'm in school classroom में, I was not a first bencher, I was not a back bencher, I was on the second bench or the third bench. So, you know, bench से पता चल जाता है कि which category I come in. Yes. So I was second, third bench for. मतलब that person is eating like <laughs> the exception yeah. of what we're doing it. okay now it is how it is we have heard yeah. that log school bhi bang karke jaate hain that time I, we were not doing that for obvious there was, there was no chance yeah yes cheeze thi but ha hamare liye wo ek fun mm-hmm. part tha ki hum log chalu lecture mein dabba ke khol ke khana hai aur dabba bhi andar desk mein rakh ke dheere 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 yeah. karke khana hai yes <laughs> So were you definitely or were you doing those stuff or uh, totally Yeah I 100% 100% I was definitely doing that in fact I remember this one time there was um, some concert right outside our school and you know very famous songs were playing and all the all the students were very excited probably fifth standard and they all ran to the window to see okay. ki kya music chal raha hai that time you know you get really uh, fascinated by anything outside the school mm-hmm. and we had the Uh, most strict class teacher okay so the minute we went there suddenly she enters and everyone goes back to their seats and i still remember her face like she asked me, and i was also one of them you know i ran and i was like man let's dance ye wo and she comes in and she just asks one question whoever went to the window stand up and obviously no one was standing but i stood up so i did the masti also and i was also like very kind of honest also honesty Aisa. honesty tab bhi thi मतलब वो हाँ. पे भी थी, right. वो भी था, हाँ. <laughs> okay. uh, so, what, what you in you uh, yeah, definitely. I think um, I was always very good at studies. So studies is something that came very naturally to me. Like for example, uh, when I was in tenth, I was one of the toppers in my school. Like I got a ninety six point seven percent in ICSC. Or whether it was in twelfth, uh, I got a ninety three in ISC. So um, you know these kind of boards, it it was it was very natural for me. Like studies, me thoda mehnat karo, I would get a result. Badminton, me you have to really work hard and tab jaake kuch result milta. So I always. Um, Uh, it was it was easy for me and i think uh, it was very essential as well because right now even though i'm playing my focus is playing anywhere i go i'm traveling the world going for tournaments anybody i talk to i think i have um, you know some kind of uh, substance to talk about because i went to school because i studied because i had i have that basic knowledge of science math arts which you only get in school right so um, that is definitely you know um, at least right now in the current kind of uh, curriculum that we have in india school has been so essential and it's been amazing to see um, how my personality also de- developed because i think teachers the environment here and i was very fortunate to be in a very good school called uh, jamna bai nursery in mumbai right. in juhu um, i made some very great friends as well so it was a very positive experience for me i think it really molded my personality mm-hmm. because uh, now when i go anywhere i have that little bit of you know in that nature because i have um, that's been the base foundation right so definitely um, you know and studies has been a major part in that because i attending lectures learning about the earth whether it's geography learning about science knowing basic physics chemistry all of that it helps you it always helps right so, uh, i think badminton wasn't a hobby it was something i started pehle se like i was just meant to do it i think So for me, hobbies would have been I used to sing a little bit in school. I used to dance a lot. So those would probably be my hobbies. Reading was a hobby. Cooking was a hobby. I even started cooking at a very early age. 
so those were kind of my hobbies but badminton was definitely much more serious because i think i started being very consistent from an early age i was showing up for practice uh, very consistently there was structure around it so i wouldn't really call it a hobby i would say it was more serious uh I would say I'm an ambivert, which is basically I'm I'm an extrovert and I'm an introvert. Mixture uh, of both. And a mixture of both. I would uh, describe myself as a dreamer. I think I'm mostly dreaming all the time, whether it's about about badminton or anything else. So that would be the second point. I'm like a major dreamer. I cannot live without thinking about something. You know, that's not really here, but I'm just dreaming and. Um, I think I would still have a very good imagination in that sense. And uh, third thing would be I'm super filmy, so I literally look at everything as if it's like a movie, and uh, I kind of have that sort of idealistic um, expectation from everything around me. But I've kind of learned to um, make it make it a little bit more realistic and find that balance. So um, usually I like I'm very thankful and grateful for you know all of the positive response that I've got to my posts and I do get a lot of messages. Uh, some of the messages make me super happy especially when people say that you know this particular post inspired me or uh, even so many people when I posted something about my painting they painted and they sent it to me they were like you know we were getting bored in quarantine but now we've Seeing your painting, even I tried painting, and I really, um, you know, see this. This is my creative expression, and just to be able to inspire that in whoever's life that is, it just it makes me so happy. I've had so many people, uh, you know, use my smoothie recipe, make a smoothie, and send the picture to me. Wow. So all those things are like uh, it's priceless, you know. It's not. Um, it definitely makes me very happy. At the same time, sometimes there are certain messages where you know people are constantly hello, hey, hey, hi, hi, and I'm just like I don't know you. Like, I'm so I'm sorry. My team was it. the same. My team was the same. <laughs> no, but at least you had a reason and a you know a purpose behind it. And yeah, and I am a little private in that sense. Like if somebody random just messages me, hey, dinner ho gaya, I'm like, huh. <laughs> Hello. And that too on Instagram, it is very odd. <laughs> yeah, and dinner okay? Like even my mom won't ask me that. Maybe only my mom asks me that. But yeah. No, but that is legal. <laughs> She should ask. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But this is what happens on Instagram. So there's like a positive side and a little bit of a weird side to it. Like, actually, I'm more responsive on comments. So if I get like a really legit, le- legitimate question uh, in the comment section, then I would definitely reply. Like I have a lot of people who ask training related questions, diet related questions, or just more inspirational questions in general. I love to answer those kind of things. So mm-hmm. I would definitely leave a message. And if they're really taking to it well, then Yeah, I I respond. For me, sleeping is definitely one thing because when you're at the national center, you know sometimes those kids start playing at 4 a.m. in the morning, yeah, and I'm just like, it. kill me right now. Like you know, you feel like throwing furniture at them because you're so tired, you're so <laughs> sleepy, and you really just want that peaceful rest, which is a little bit difficult um, in those circumstances. So when I come home, it's like I go out and tell everyone in the house, I am sleeping. So now, like you know, no, no maids' ka bhartan, no, no, nothing. Please, I just two three days would be all about sleeping, and even ghar ka khana is something I've missed a lot in the last few years. So these couple of months, I've had like a major overdose of ghar ka ghar ka khana. So yeah, roommate. Uh, I've had a series of roommates. So uh, currently, my roommate for the longest time has been uh, Manisha K. Okay. So. She was a former, uh, like she's been, she's been in the circuit for quite some time. She's a few years, couple of years older than me. Ah, uh, hoti hai, kabi kabi hoti hai. Like before this, um, uh, when I had first come to the academy, there were three of us sharing a room. There was this player called uh, Shikha Gautam, mm-hmm. and who's a singles player, and uh, Reshma Kartik. And this was back in 2016, and three of us were sharing this one tiny room, and. It was uh, it was a blast. I think one of my best uh, roommate experience. It was my first out, uh, you know, um, outside of Mumbai wala roommate experience, and it was it was amazing. Like we we had a lot of fun. Um, there have been different people that have come in. There hasn't been like one constant person, but there have been different people that have come in and literally changed everything for me in that particular phase. And uh, I feel like sometimes it has something to do with destiny because. Right at the time where you know you feel like 
there's no way this is getting better like i'm just stuck in this dark uh, space somebody will come and usually it's a person like you know sometimes it could be um, other things but for me it's always been some person who came in at the right time and just made everything a little bit more better and then i got out of that space so i've had a, i've had a lot of people come in like you know sometimes it's been a particular coach or a physio or sometimes my school friend or there were there's a lot of people that have come in and made that difference oh, wow. so i would say i have a uh, my best friend is somebody that i sat with in class back in 6th standard and i've known her from 4th standard but we became best friends in 6th when we sat together in class and i think the thing that really connected us was the fact that we could laugh a lot together okay. and i i really like value people that i can genuinely just laugh with and you know just feel very real and authentic with them and we've been friends since she's, she's still my uh, my best friend and she's been constant but you know when you're traveling it's not that we talk every day sometimes we don't talk for 6 months but the minute i pick up the phone it's like the same right. so there have been people who are constant but you know coming out of the dark phase i would say there's been different people at different times right so uh, for me right now it is I'm focusing on myself in terms of how I'm playing and how fit I am, and um, I want to be able to play at the Super Series level. Like that's my goal, that's my dream at a very consistent level. So everything that I do in training, everything that I'm doing is to you know start playing at that level, start um, performing decently, and becoming a regular at that particular level. And then you know the results that are meant to come, whether it's like. the big events like everyone dreams of an olympics or an or a world championship those things just happen when they're meant to happen and if you've done enough work then you know they they happen but um, that that's literally sometimes i feel it's it's a lot to do with destiny also like you can just do your part of course if you don't do your part it's it's nothing's going to happen but once you've done your part it all depends on uh, on destiny right So it was definitely lockdown. I think uh, in my usual schedule, there's no way I have time to do anything else because that's how exhausted we are from training, traveling, and there's just so much to do. It's very difficult to actually build up your social media. So I was very, very inactive on social media before lockdown. I know players who are, you know, my seniors, juniors, they're all super active on Insta with a lot of followers, and I was nowhere on the scene at all because I was I was just exhausted most of the time from training. I didn't have that inclination. but then um, during lockdown suddenly i realized there's actually nothing to do and everybody is on social media so you know i had to really um, i just felt inspired so first i started posting more on social media it was just pictures and a few training videos and the minute i started getting a good response i my creative mind just kicked into you know like um, the next gear because uh, i remember I, I feel like I was doing a lot of creative work during the lockdown period whether it was artwork whether it was cooking whether so initially once you know our training load our traveling went down I had all of this creative energy that I didn't know what to do with mm-hmm. so that's when I just decided to you know it just came to me it was like an inspiration thing and I said why not let's do this the initial idea was I didn't even know the term sun speaks like I just decided to just do an instagram live because a lot of people were doing it I thought it might be fun and that's how it started right and i really prep for it like 3 4 days of proper prep for every guest so that you know that's the only way you can make it enjoyable otherwise it's yeah. just going to be repetitive and not so not so good so that's what i started doing and then while i was posting the first live i just thought you know why not just give it some name like okay sun speaks and i just put like hashtag sun speaks and that's how it began and now everyone looks at me and they're like hey sun speaks hi <laughs> and i'm like what is happening like i'm no idea how all this happened but yeah. a lot of people i feel were very very demotivated distracted and just lost during the lockdown i was also uh, i also felt that way for a few days in between and that's when you know you watch one thing on social media that just inspires you a little bit or something funny and it can literally lift you up like you know that could be the turning point that saves you from not going into that sort of uh, sad kind of mood so that was another intention behind what i was doing because the it wasn't just about you know getting more viewers but it was also that okay this might really help someone yeah, so yeah, yeah though i think the craziest one i've heard is will you marry me oh. directly <laughs> no hi no hello just will you no, marry directly me? directly yeah. was it in comments or was it in messages 
everywhere the same person i think comments also messages also and i'm just like what response do you expect what am i supposed to say to that give it in a creative way yeah i could have thought of something like that but then i was just like whatever okay mm, there's many that i would want to okay tell me uh, i would say yeah any any injury that i might have had i would want to just delete that injury period but in retrospect i feel that kind of period those tough times made me who i am today so in that sense um, okay but maybe it could have been a little nicer like not so hard a break um i would say badminton wise uh, it would probably be um the first title that i won in poland Uh, because i feel that tournament just made me believe a lot more in myself before that i only really played like national tournaments i never played abroad it was my first two and winning that first title really made me believe in myself as a player and i feel that was a very uh, turning point um, turning th- that was a turning point and so i would want to keep that all day i don't know but i'm not so sure about that like i wanted to be a chef Okay. so um that was something i was looking at or else it would have definitely been something in studies first because i was good at that as well i like to do it also so i don't think act- acting would have been like my second or third option it would have probably but it was there in the back of my mind like a hobby kind of thing okay mental fraternity uh to be very honest i don't have many close friends from badminton most of my close friends are outside badminton because i like being very professional when i'm uh, when i'm playing and yeah we do develop friendships but at the end of the day when i'm on court when i'm in that environment it's just like a switch is on where i but i'm trying to be as professional as i can be so i wouldn't say there's some one person that's very close but there's there's a lot of them that i'm good friends with Mm, uh, I don't think I don't know. I I honestly don't know. It is just it's just human nature. Like I'm like any other human. So just yeah, I I, I don't know. Just, I honestly don't. just pops out or it like thank you like that. It depends. Like I uh, I'm usually very I'm a very like I said I'm a very private person and most of these things I only I only discuss with like uh, people that are very close to me. For sure. Uh, BBL has been such a blessing, especially for you know players like me that have really taken part. And I've been there, for, I think, three or four BBLs now. And every time there was so much to learn from all of the uh, foreign players that came in, and even some of the Indian seniors. We usually don't get to interact with them as much because, um, like, staying together as a team, traveling together, practicing together is something that. just never happens on even if you're playing international tournaments mm-hmm. so for me key players like whether it's leon de hendra sedevan and all of these players i was on the same team as them there was so much to learn from them matthias bo so um it's been a phenomenal thing especially for kind of developing the sport in india uh, for creating more awareness about badminton which really helps bring up the sport as well and also for junior players like us like i was a ju- I think I just come out of the junior category when I played my first PBL, and it was such an inspiring experience. So it's definitely a win-win situation. I just wish it was kind of uh, you know uh, marketed a bit more, so even more people can watch it. Like how the Kabaddi League has just taken off, and those kind of things. I think badminton is also very marketable, and if um, you know it can be advertised even more, it would uh, it it would be a bigger hit. Best PBL memories. I think it would probably be when we won. So I was uh, playing for Bangalore that year and the Bengaluru Blasters. And I remember when the team won and everyone just ran to the court and you know uh, we took the trophy. It was quite a nice experience. And I would also uh, say last year when I played for Chennai, Chennai. Uh, I got a chance to play and I played against uh, Lee Yong Day and Kim Hana. and that would definitely be like a oh my god experience because uh, leon bay has kind of been like one of my idols and um, it was phenomenal like serving to him and he's smashing i'm defending and while i'm playing i have to like just remind myself that i'm not just an opponent be calm and just do your thing so uh, that was an experience i'll never forget right. i think uh, firstly if players are giving sports the first preference that is something that i have done all my life and i created something where i could balance it out in such a way that i was studying as well so having that balance is super important 
um i think that um, a lot of players if they are playing they completely neglect their studies and that is something i wouldn't recommend at all because i feel studies helps you to open your mind it helps you it, it will help you in your game as well to understand strategy i feel later on a lot of children who didn't go to school didn't study really well mentally it um, it kind of hinders you a little bit so it's very important to keep gaining knowledge and uh, you know learning that kind of thing so i would say studies is definitely important but um, learn to balance it and if you are giving sports the first priority that's also okay as long as you are giving enough time to studies as well and um, another thing that i would want to say is that if you are doing this and taking this chance of you know putting studies a little bit on the um, like the second priority then it's really important that you are giving 100% of effort to your sport mm-hmm. so if you're not going to be very sincere in your badminton practice and because of that you're like not really studying well as much uh, not even studying as much then mm-hmm. that would kind of it doesn't make sense so unless and until you're really 100% you, people can see that dedication that you're putting into your sport then okay it, it's fine to kind of keep sex, studies a little bit um you know uh, on the second uh, position but for sure it's important it's important for your brain to develop it's important so you can um, you know it it just make your life much richer because mm-hmm. that's how much your understanding has deepened yeah first i just want to thank you guys for having me on the show and for spreading such yeah, awareness yeah. about uh, sport badminton and uh, it's it's wonderful because i think sports has enriched my life so much and if i'm able to give back to it and if i'm able to kind of spread a little message so that more people are aware about it um it's it's a wonderful thing it's a wonderful feeling because something that has given me so much i'm able to give back in in whatever little way so my message would definitely be uh, you know to everyone watching that um work hard work smart go after your dreams and just be fearless